Hello and welcome to EV Motoring. I'm Joe and today I have a Tesla Model Y here because I'm going to show off my brand new level 2 charger that I just installed. So right here I have the Electron V-Box 48 amp unit. Uh, I'll show you a little bit about the installation process and when I plugged it in uh, to the NEMA 1450 outlet, now I have it set up to be hardwired. So we'll pull the Tesla in the garage and see what a difference that makes in charging. So the important thing to note is that there's three factors that affect how fast a vehicle will level two charge. One is the onboard charger of the car, because in fact, these units are actually not the charger. They're just EVSEs, electric vehicle supply equipment. So the charger is built into the car. So I will go ahead and show the Tesla Model 3 here, plugging in and showing what charge, what speed it will charge at. Then uh, there's the limit by the amperage supplied to the power outlet. So it used to be a 50 amp outlet here. So you'll see when I had it plugged in, uh, it was limiting it to 40 amps. And then now that we have it hardwired with a 60 amp circuit breaker, we now will, should be able to get 48 amps of power, which will allow this Tesla to charge at around 12 kilowatts of speed, which makes a big difference if you're trying to get a full battery overnight. For like the Tesla Model 3 standard range, not a big deal, Chevy Bolt, not a big deal. But when you get these bigger battery vehicles like a Ford Lightning, Rivian, the Hummer especially, you're gonna to wanna to have a little more power in the garage to make sure you can get a good charge overnight if you do happen to come home with a low state of charge and have a lot to have driving to do the next day. All right, so here in the winter wonderland, it's time to install this charger. So let's start with the unboxing. So Electron sent me this product to test out. I've um, actually been a pretty big fan of their product because I tested out their Tesla to J1772 adapter. I'll link that video up above. That's what allows you to charge a non-Tesla with a Tesla destination charger or Tesla wall connector, things such as that. But now let's get all of this out of the box and see what we have here. So we have the hook, which is awesome because that's gonna allow us to store our cable properly. Uh, some chargers actually don't really come with a solution on how to store the cable. This also gives us flexibility to be able to, to be able to mount the charger up above where our last charger was. So this allows us to um, not have to you know, be caught with making sure that the charger is installed somewhere that you can wrap the cable over the charger. This allows us to put the charger up high and the hook down low, and it'll help with cable management and work for our garage installation here. So here we've been using the Polestar charger here on our NEMA 1450 outlet. I'll take this out, show you what we got here. So that's a typical NEMA 1450 outlet. You would see that if you were installing an electric range in your kitchen. But the Polestar charger here, just like a Tesla mobile connector, delivers 32 uh, amps of peak charging power and it's a mobile connector. It doesn't sit on the wall nicely. I wanted to get a proper charger in here. One thing I like about this unit is the very long power cord attached to it. Some units have quite a short cord attached to it right here. So this is gonna add a little more flexibility on where we want to install it or you know where on the wall we want to install it. Another thing to keep in mind is see the uh, ground is down. This outlet can be rotated either way, but if you're having an electrician do it, you might want to make sure which charger you're buying and where you want the charger installed before that outlet's installed so they can have that ground go in the right direction because it might make it very tough to plug it in versus very easy to plug it in just by having this flipped one way or another. Okay, we got the bracket on the wall. Just double check that we're level. Perfect. Now I can take the charger and put it onto the bracket. It just kind of slides on here. There we go. And then these little screws get fed in on the sides. All right, so I installed the holder here. So I have my cable hanging on there and I got the uh, nozzle holder right there. So cable management and that are dealt with right now. There's a little protective cover that comes with this as well. I won't be using that because I'll be using that. But yeah, looks pretty good. So now it's time to uh, turn on the power and plug it in. Okay, now that we have it plugged in, I can press the power button right here. And there we go, we have power. This light makes a bunch of different colors to signal what is happen happening with the V-Box. 
I love that there's a display right here showing the power. So it shows we are rated at 40 amps right now since we're, since we're plugged in. 242 volts, 35 degrees right now. And uh, yeah, it'll, it'll monitor our charging sessions. So now let's go, uh, I'm gonna clean up and bring the car in and plug it in. I have the Tesla set to 100% to charge to, or it's at about 55% right now. Battery's pretty cold. But what you'll see right here, as soon as it gets to 32 amps, it stops. That's because as I mentioned earlier, this Tesla can only charge at 32 amps, regardless of the charger being able to deliver 40. So uh, now we'll jump into the future. I'll bring another EV here that can charge at 48 amps. We'll hardwire this unit and show the full potential. So now I'll pull the Tesla in the garage and uh, plug it into this unit and see how it does. All right, have my adapter that Tesla supplies with every vehicle purchase to convert a J1772 to the Tesla plug here. Plug it in. And let's see, one of the great things I like about this unit is the digital screen right here. So it shows on the bottom left corner that we're rated at 48 amps. It says that the uh, internals of the charger are at, are at almost 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And now it'll show the charge ramping up. And then it even has a little battery to show the state of charge of the Tesla. So great amount of data provided here on the screen. It's not a smart charger, but it at least provides the data here. Um, so it's just as easy to hop out to the garage and see it. And when you see the price point at the time of filming this at about $450 for the charger, considering Tesla just raised the price of their wall connector to $425, this might be the better option to go, especially since usually Electron on their website has a couple of discount codes going on. Right here you see we're at 48 amps, so really maximizing the abilities of this Tesla right now and charging a little bit faster than I would have had I just had it plugged in. So this unit has great flexibility since it comes with the NEMA 1450 outlet or um, plug attached to the unit when you unbox it. Then you just uh, you know have your electrician take that outlet off, hardwire it, and you can get a little extra power. If you don't need the extra power, well, it's convenient that you can just take it and plug it in. That's one of the downsides of the uh, Tesla wall connector is that it always comes, it needs to be hardwired. So a little bit more convenience here with the V-Box. I'll be sure to have the links down below so you can check out the product on Amazon as well as on Lectron's website. So be sure to check those out. Um, let's go hop in the car real quick and see what kind of speed we're getting. So actually it's probably easier to just th show through the window here because once I open the door, it'll change the screen. You can see here, we're charging at 11 kilowatts at 48 amps, 235 volts. So excellent charging uh, with the Lectron V-Box. So pretty much to wrap it up, I think, uh, you know, I've owned a wall box Pulsar Plus. I thought that was an excellent charger as well but it's quite a pricey charger in the process. I think around $650 at this point is what it sells for. It has a lot of great features, but in my opinion, I'm not someone who uh, thinks it's worth paying all that extra money to get that Wi-Fi connectivity. If you are, yeah, that might be the unit for you, but I think bang for the buck, this unit right here, this Electron V-Box 48 amp, you're getting 48 amps of power, the flexibility that it comes with, NEMA 1450 plug on the end of it when you when you order it. It has the dial on the back that lets you adjust the power to what power you want to charge with at home. And works great for my installation here because even though my car only charges at 32 amps, I'm constantly switching cars, uh, testing different cars around here. So now having this extra power in the garage is going to be great to be able to test many EVs in the future. And uh, thanks again to Electron for sending this device and letting me test it out. So if you found this content helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more EV content as well as some other, uh, some more of Electron's products that have featured in the past. Be sure to check the links down in the description for the charger. It's available both on Amazon and directly from Electron. Typically it's a little bit cheaper going straight through Electron since they have some coupon codes usually and stuff like that. But uh, be sure to let me know what you think. Do you think this is a good product? Do you think this is pretty competitive with the other chargers out there? I think the four-year warranty that it comes with is just outstanding. And, you know, glad to see that they stand behind their product. You know, there's a lot of companies out there that only provide a one-year warranty or sometimes less than that. What is that saying about that company? If they're not willing to stand behind their product for more than a year, you know, that means they're, they're not expecting it to last much more than a year. And with that, we'll wrap it up. And take care until next time.